Hi, it's Musharraf Hussain with the subject of interpreting taxing statutes. Our today's topic is composition of a section. Parts of a section. An enactment are commonly known as section. In its most complicated form is made up of the following parts. A statutory declaration, case, conditions, exception and proviso a statutory declaration an enactment in its simplest form is a declaration of the legislature directing or empowering the doing or abstention from doing of a particular act or thing such an enactment consists of a legal subject and legal predicate the legal subject denotes either the person directed or empowered to do or prohibited from doing or when the passive form is used the thing to be done or left undone. The legal predicate expresses what the person is to do or leave undone or when the passive form is used what is enacted with respect to the thing to be done or to be left undone. Illustration of a statutory declaration. CGST section 3 says the government shall by notification appoint the following classes of officers for the purposes of this act. CGST section 22 subsection 1 says every supplier shall be liable to be registered. Here the government and every supplier is the subject and the remaining ones are predicate with auxiliary shall. Another example, CGST section 9 subsection 1. There shall be levied a tax called the Central Goods and Service Tax on all intra-state supply of goods or services or both. Here a tax called the Central Goods and Service Tax is the subject and shall be levied and all intrastate supply of goods or services or both is the predicate with auxiliary shall. If the law is imperative, the proper auxiliary verb of the predicate is shall or shall not. But if it is permissive, then it is may. May indicates option as well as discretion. While discussing short title, we observed that income tax section 1, subsection 1, which reads as this act may be called the Income Tax Act 1961, allows it to be referred either by the short title, that is Income Tax Act 1961, or by the serial number as allowed by General Clause section 28, subsection 1. Similarly, CGST section 1 subsection 3 which reads as it shall come into force on such date as the central government may by notification in the official gazette appoint. It mandates enforcement of the act but allows the government to choose the date of commencement and so we can see the two words shall and may. There is an inclination of the court to construe may as sometimes imperative in an act. This requires that in doubtful cases the draftsman or the drafter of law should add words such as may in its discretion or may if it thinks it expedient and so forth to distinguish clearly the imperative and permissive enactments. For example, CGST section 168 subsection 1, the board may, if it considers it necessary or expedient so to do for the purpose of uniformity in the implementation of this act, issue such orders, instruction, etc. This may and the clause after that 
makes it a permissive. Again, we will see that after the direction to the central government officer as it may deem fit, this also indicates a discretionary one. And thereupon, all such officers and all other persons employed in the implementation of this act shall observe and follow such orders, instructions or directions. The shall here, we can simply say that it is imperative in sense. Now qualifying phrase, we often see words such as notwithstanding anything contained in the act or in any other act or in section. This is used to make that rule in which it is qualifying an overriding one. A section with this phrase is called non obstante clause. This is uh, of particular importance because any other section to which it overrides becomes subsided against this section against the application of this section. Another word, qualifying word, we see that without prejudice to, this is used to make the legal rule of that section independent of the rule in the other named section. One more case is of safe, safe as otherwise provided in. This is used to salvage or save the named enactment from being affected by the legal rule of this section. Save here simply implies accept. One more qualifier is subject to. We can say that subject to is opposite of not understanding. So when it is used, the rule of the subjected section is to eld give way to the rule of another master section in case of conflict between these two. Some special phrases with its legal significances are also common. One is be deemed. This is used to create legal fiction by assuming existence of a fact which does not really exist. Deems fit is used to confer discretion. Have regard to means taking into consideration the matters referred to. Prescribed. We'll find this word often, especially in a taxing statutes. This indicates existence of corresponding delegated legislation, rules, notifications or forms case. Now the little difficulty would arise in framing acts if the law were as a general rule meant to apply universally. It is usually limited to a special cases and the first duty of a draftsman is to state clearly the nature of the case to which the law applies. Case may be introduced in the section with words such as in case of, in the event of, where, when, if, etc. with the indicative. For example, CGST section 13 sets the time of supply in different cases. CGST section 13, subsection 4 says, in case of supply of vouchers by a supplier, the time of supply shall be a, the date of the issue of the voucher, if the supply is identifiable at that point and the date of or the date of redemption of voucher in all other cases. So there are two instances of case here. First the initial word in case of supply of vouchers. Then again we find the word if and the remaining words in all other cases. Now CGST section 13.5 subsection 5 it starts with where it is not possible to determine the time of supply under the provisions of subsection 2 or subsection 3 or subsection 4. The time of supply shall 
in a case where a periodical return has to be filed be the date on which such return is to be filed or be in any other case be the date on which the tax is paid so the case here has been started by where and again in the clause a and clause b case has been given condition the law frequently confers a benefit or imposes an obligation on certain conditions a condition is aptly introduced by if or where it follows a negative sentence by unless or until where the conditions are numerous it is best to state them in separate subordinate sentences for example cgst section 16 subsection 2 gives two condition with the word unless so notwithstanding anything contained in this section no registered person shall be entitled to the credit of any input tax in respect of any supply of goods or services or both to him unless he is in possession of a tax invoice or debit note issued by a supplier registered under this act or such other tax paying documents as may be prescribed and b he has received the goods or services or both so these are the two conditions for availing of input tax credit as provided in CGST section 16 subsection 2 exception the word except will generally be used in introducing exceptions that is to restrain to legal rules the legal rules to particular cases I mean the general rule the general legal rule of the declaration statutory declaration will not apply in the accepted cases in the exceptions care must however be taken to avoid its use where it is likely to lead to ambiguity and where exceptions are numerous they should be placed in a separate members of this section or even in a separate section where the enumeration of the exceptions is short compared with the enumeration of the particulars not accepted it is often convenient to state the exception first for example CGST section 9 subsection 1 which provides for the levy of CGST reads as subject to the provision of subsection 2 they shall be levied a tax called the central goods and services tax on all interstate supplies of goods or services or both except on the supply of alcoholic liquor for human consumption so the effect is not to apply the levy of tax on the supply of alcoholic liquor for human consumption proviso a proviso is used to remove a special cases from the general legal rule an exception we saw that in the exception cases the rules are not applied at all but in case of proviso it is not that the general legal rules are not applied but it is applied in a special way proviso should never be used to define the case or the condition or the legal subject their proper function is to make a special exemption from a general statutory declaration and they should be exclusively confined to that function the rules with respect to the grouping of conditions and exceptions apply to proviso also where they are numerous number of proviso first proviso begins with the phrase provided that second proviso with the provided further that and subsequent proviso with provided also that so to know the number of proviso we need to count manually from the third proviso you may wonder that income tax section 10 subsection 23c has as many as 21 provisos instances of proviso 
can see in section 37 of GST Act the three provisos are there the yellow one the first proviso provided that the second pro proviso provided further that with the green label and with the blue label the third proviso provided also that An explanation is appended to a section to explain the meaning of words contained in the section. The scope of an explanation may be delimited, fixed by adding expressions such as for the purpose of this act, for example, one can refer say GST section 15, then for the purpose of this chapter, we can refer say GST section 94, then for the purpose of this section, one can refer CGST section 14 and for the purpose of this subsection one can refer CGST section 15 subsection 2 or for the purpose of this clause one can refer CGST section 16 subsection 2 and clause B. An illustration or example is appended to a section to help to elucidate the legal rules of that section. A one very good example of composite supply is there that is in CGST section 2 subsection 30. Thank you.